I'm going to call to order the Norco City Council meeting for our fee study worksheet. If the city clerk will please take the roll. Council members Newton. Hoffman. Here. Bash. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hanna. Here. Mayor Grunmeyer. Yes. All present. Thank you. At this time, we'll have Councilman Newton uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. Please rise. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so we have one business item for this afternoon, and the order of the presentation will go as follows. Uh, we'll have the staff report and presentation, council questions of staff, public speakers in favor, against, and neutral, and then council discussion and action and direction. So with that being said, item number one is the discussion of the fee study and proposed city fees excluding uh, recreation fees. So, Gina. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council members. I'm pleased to present today Eric Johnson, who is uh, our fee analysis and president of Revenue and Cost Specialist. And just a reminder, we're here today um, as a study session to uh, review a completed comprehensive fee study and cost allocation plan for the city's council's review. The last study was completed 10 years ago with several fee and cost allocation plan updates occurring since 2008-2009. The City Council will review each service and the suggested recovery rate to determine how much of each service should be recovered through fees and how much should be subsidized through the City's tax dollars. The review will provide direction to staff regarding the cost recovery of services associated with each fee. And I'm, here's Eric Johnson to begin the presentation. And just to let you know, I'm going to have a PDF um, and we'll be searching the document that you see and we also have a little snag it going on here so it'll eventually be with the um, video that we're currently running as well so the community will be able to see it great thank you gina good good afternoon madam mayor members of the council it's good to be back here again this afternoon um want to really have an interaction with with you as we go through the various different services so that you can have a discussion about amongst yourselves about what things you want to subsidize, what things you have questions about, what things you have issues with, and we can get some policy direction and be able to bring back a fee schedule based on that direction. And so I'm hoping that it'll be a, 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 a lively discussion. This is the this is the fun part. This is where we get to um, really have get into the the detail and see what it is um, we want to that's important enough to subsidize and what it is that the the um, party benefiting from the service should pay for that service. And so just a, a, a very quick overview on the on the where these costs came from. So as, as you remember from my previous um, presentation, it came from all the meetings we had with staff about how much time they're spending on services. And we looked at 100% of all the services that staff are doing. Some of it are, are fee services that show up in this report. Some of it are tax supported services. Most of it are, is tax supported services, the services that you provide to the community like parks and streets and fire and police. Um, some of it's cost allocation, overhead services, administrative services. And so we had a, a very detailed cost allocation plan that we did also. And so with that time detail, we developed a fully burned hourly rate for every position in the city. So it's made up of salaries, benefits, the operating expenses within that department, but it also made up of overhead. And so various different departments have different levels of overhead that may turn into different fully burned hourly rates. Um, though, and those departments that are providing administrative support to other parts of the organization don't have overhead because their overhead is now parceled out and part of the overhead for all the people that are providing services to the public. So you may have instances where um, someone may have a higher hourly rate than somebody else because they are providing services to the public and all the overheads are al allocated onto them, whereas you may have somebody else that um, isn't where they're providing su support services to the rest of the organization. And so as we go through this, those costs that we see in here are those fully burned hourly rates. All the services we see in here are services provided to the public so they have all the appropriate overheads, whether it be city overhead or department overhead, added onto those services. Any questions or concerns about that before we get into the services? All right. Um, what would actually, if I, yeah, 
Yes. And so, as a suggestion for a way to get through all these services in the next two hours, is we have the various services on the screen there that, and kind of looking at it by exception, that we identified, does anyone have any issues or questions or um, concerns about the recommended um, cost, re the recommended fees, which in most cases are 100% cost recovery. I'll point out those as we go through here that aren't. and versus going through each individual one and having a discussion about each individual one, which will take um, longer. Um, if, if that's okay, uh, Madam Mayor, I'll go ahead and, okay. And so the big thing we have here on the very first page is construction plan check and inspection. So this is the building safety service. This is the everything that building and safety does and has all kinds of individual fees, whether it be valuation fees for new construction or individual, individual mechanical, electrical, or plumbing permits, all are included in this service. And so what we did when we looked at this, we looked at it in the aggregate. What's the total cost of building and safety? And what are the total revenues looking at over a multi-year uh, period of time so we're not looking at a peak revenue or a valley revenue, we're looking at an average over a period of time. And what's that cost recovery? Well, currently that cost recovery is about 88%. And so that's why we're recommending that all these fees be increased by 10% to get us closer to that 100% cost recovery. Um, this is a big service, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here and, and see if anyone has any questions about that, that methodology or that, those results. Do any members of the council have any questions at this time? Just looking down on to... Uh, would the uh, environmental assessments on EIRs, would that fall into this category? It would not. That would be under planning and would be um, separate Next. and over and above this. So my understanding is that then anything in this building category right now, we're looking to recover 100%. That's correct. Okay. I'll hold my question okay. to your next category then. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Of the schedules themselves, for example, S-00100, so that we have a flavor of what is in cost. Um, I don't. We don't have that detail in the book. It's you know it's the detail that's on the um, city's fee schedule. Um, they're not up uploading. Exactly. That they're not. No, not unless you have. Are not uh, the entire book is here. We're looking at the entire book. Right, but so. So if you could uh, go to, well, there's a page number here, S-00100, I guess it's whatever page it is. It's probably page. Uh, right, and so the, 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 the individual detail, all those schedules are not in the book. Um, it's on the city's fee schedule. Um, and basically it's, you know, it's, like I said, it's various different valuation fees for new construction. And there are various individual um, fees for, you know, a re-roof or uh, right. a, a um, water heater permit or things of that nature. Yeah. And so, so the, that detail is not in the book. This one? Right. That detail is not, right. It, it identifies the cost there, but it doesn't identify all the various different individual fees. Okay. Because it goes on for many pages. And so it's basically saying we're taking whatever, what the city is currently charging for the building safety and increasing that by 10%. All right. Um, any any questions about microfilming plans or special inspection? And what we've done, I'm getting copies of that for you, and we're going to get the PDF for it too. So if you want to skip this one and come back, we can still review it that way. And and also, what's on the screen is what's in your book here in Appendix A. So it's the same exact thing we're looking at in Appendix A. All right. So let's go ahead and scroll down. Then we're getting into more of the planning fees now. Pre-application review, first review is free. There's a, um, the, the, each additional review is going up somewhat. Informal review by planning commission, if someone wants to take a conceptual plan to the planning commission, 
you can see it's it's going up quite a bit, 872 to 1645. And all all of these fees where we see, you know, there's a big increase. It can, all the all the changes, all the in individual fees came from all these discussions we have with staff about how much time is being spent today. So that's part of the, re the part of it from being 10 years old. Processes change, not in addition to just the cost have increased over 10 years. So this is one where we have a substantial increase in that fee. I'm going to keep moving until someone tells me to stop. Okay. <laughs> because I'm trying to flip back and uh -huh. forth, back, back and forth. So would, if you wouldn't mind, would you say like planning, mm -hmm. okay, would you please reference a S number? So that would be... So in this particular case, it's also up here also. So for instance, pre-application uh, review, S008. I have to flip back to here or to look at that. Either one, right. So, but... Planning would be zero zero. Starting with S008. Zero zero eight. Correct. And then how far will that continue? That will continue for quite a ways. Um, I guess that's what I'm looking for is the yeah. end number for each. For the end number for planning would be um, zero three zero eight. to the book and actually bring up those pages if you'd like to s for us to start there. So with that, I look at <coughs> row one six hundred <coughs> environmental assist assessment. Yes. Okay. We lost twenty-two thousand dollars last year. Is that correct? Am I looking at that correctly? E, in essence, yes. If th this is one where it's a combination of flat fee and deposit, that it's a flat fee up to a certain dollar amount, then it, it becomes a deposit after that. This is also something that. I don't believe we had the city did one last year, um, and so we always have to put a unit of one just to be able to calculate the cost. And so this is something that if one would have come in, and it would have been under that 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 flat fee of ours, then yes, the city would have lost that amount of money. Is that what that number sign means at the end next to zero? Yes, that there's insufficient volume um, to have a um, revenue. So then. <clears throat> It wouldn't be worthwhile to make a comment that we should have a hundred percent recovery on that. It was it it, it was hundred percent recovery. It's just at that point ten years ago it was hundred percent recovery, okay. and so we're saying today we're recommending basically all the planning fees in here. We're recommending one hundred percent cost recovery. So the recommended fees in here are one hundred percent cost recovery. I'm just targeting the larger ones. Mm -hmm. But if you move down to zero eighteen hundred general plan maintenance, there seems to be enough activity. And we lost eighty-five thousand dollars. Right, and th and the recommendation is to only recover thirty-five of the eighty-five. Well, and this is—I take it back. There is one service in planning that is um, less than one hundred percent cost recovery. This particular service, you'll see in that schedule. If you go across to the right, the second column of percentages. Fifty. Fifty. Right. And so we're saying that the. The development, you know, this is something to recover the cost to update your general plan. The development, we're saying the development community should pay half of that. The rest of the community should pay the other half. And so we are recommending an increase in this fee to get from the current 15% to 50%, um, but not to 100%. Thank you for now. So on um, 00850, it goes from 872 to 1645. And what, what, is, what does the informal review by Planning Commission exactly entail? 
This is something where a developer has a conceptual review. Right. And he'd like to get the, the feel for the planning commission before he gets too far into it and before he puts too much money into his plans. And so it is him bringing his, those conceptual plans to a planning commission meeting with the staff report being written and having that discussion with the develop, developer and the planning commission and a fee to recover those costs. Right, that's what I thought. So six, six, So we're going to literally double the fee for that. Correct. I don't know, that kind of bothers me a little bit because informal suggests, but I don't know, Steve, is that accurate to you? Yeah, uh, yes, it is accurate because typically what happens right now, we used to not charge anything for it, and it still requires the preparation of staff. It says who you charged it. Eight hundred and seventy-two dollars. Yeah, and that doesn't nearly come close to covering. Now, do they get some of that back if they decide to go for a formal review? Yeah, if they go forward, then they pay full application. But I mean, if they go for the informal, get a positive response, do they then get a cut on the formal review, or do they start the whole process over again? Now, these fees that they paid for the informal review would be counted against their full application fees. So it's kind of like a partial coverage in right. the event. So, and then my other question is, and just uh, the appeals, I was looking at that this morning, and appeals to Planning Commission, uh, right now, resident, it's 104, which sounds pretty good, 185 for per appeal. Um, does that really cover it for a resident? No. And the same with the uh, appeal to city council, 351 and 565, doesn't really cover it? Well, it, it covers it for the city council, yes, because the work's primarily been done, and it's just a matter of putting... I mean, my, qu my question really is, is, as opposed to the developer, we're actually giving a cut to the property owner, and really they're not paying full bore. The developer that's my fee question. is full bore. The resident fee right. is 50%. Okay, got it. That's that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. That's all I have right now, Madam Mayor. And, and, and back on the Planning Commission one, the, the developer one is full bore. The resident one is 10%. The appeal to the Planning Commission, the previous service, 0099. Okay, so let's go back to the Appendix A. Yeah, I, I apologize for that. So we're, I'm going to try and have what we have up here in Appendix A, and so that way you can either focus on the summary schedule, which has the dollars, or the detail of each of the services in Appendix B. Our Planning Commission review for consistency. This is a new fee, um, which is half of whatever that base application fee would be. Um, let's go ahead and keep going. Architectural and photometric, landscape plan review, art appeal to planning commission we talked about. These are all existing fees that have um, relatively incremental changes based on the current time and the current cost. Going. Appeal to planning commission we just discussed, appeal to city council, commercial vehicle exemption permit, be able to park your uh, uh, commercial vehicle on a residential street as a new and renewal component, so the new fee going up uh, quite a bit. Keep going. Uh, continuance, again, relatively incremental changes. And this is if it's a uh, continuance that, that the developer requests, the applicant requests. Then we get in the conditional use permits, con uh, the CUP annual inspection, minor CUP, again, resident and developer, where we have an existing um, um, a subsidy to if you're a resident versus a developer. So there was an existing um, subsidy of about a third of the cost, looks like about 40% of the cost, and we kept that same ratio and just bumped it up. And so the resident still gets a, um, is only paying about 40% of the cost for a minor CUP. And of course, my favorite, the miniaturized pig CUP. Major CUP has an incremental increase. Permanent swap meet CUP has a, a substantial increase. This is one. 
Was the college a swap meet, or was it ours? Uh, yes, it was. And they paid this fee? Uh, wow. Whatever the fee was at that time. Yeah, 2000 It's too bad you didn't pay the employees, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question on the CUP. We have, before, when we did our accessory building, Steve, we had, they were issued a conditional use permit. And I, every time I was on planning, I said well, there's no fee or any annual way to inspect them. And we just absorbed it. We never inspected those people, did we? Now, because we've changed it over to the way we do the accessory building, are those people prior to that still on CUPs? Yes, they are. So we still have no way to inspect those properties or yet. But I see that you're putting a recommended annual f inspection fee up there on, is that just alcohol on the minor on annual inspection? Yes, primarily alcohol. Uh, we have it in there though for uh, when we need it for the conditional use permit on a case-by-case -case basis, but typically we don't, but for alcohol we do. Okay, so but those prior residents and prior accessory buildings that had under the old ordinance when they had CUPs, we're not, in, we're not uh, doing an inspection fee on those? No. no. So unless we get called for a code violation, right. they don't get inspected. We have no idea if they're in compliance. Other than a code violation, correct? Code violations we know. Others we don't have, we don't know. Okay. All right. Thank you. CUP modification, we got rid of the minor major category. There really wasn't a distinction in the amount of time spent, so it's just one category, and the costs are going up quite a bit. ABC letter of necessity, rel uh, relatively minor increase there. Um, conditions, um, covenants, and restrictions review. This one's actually, the flat fee part of it's going down but we're really breaking out the city attorney piece because that's really the unknown piece, so they'll pay actual city attorney cost. So they may end up paying more uh, depending on the amount of city attorney time spent on this um, review. We get an entertainment permit for live music, live dancing. Then we get into the environmental categorical exemption, relatively minor increase there. Initial study mit mitigated negative declaration. And this is one where similar to the, the EIR review, this, there's a base fee that covers so much time, and if it goes over that time, then it's on a time and materials basis. And the idea being that most of them will be under that base fee, um, that, and there'll just be a handful of ones that may just, you know, environmental can really go crazy, and we'll make sure the city's recovering those costs. So same thing with the mitigation plan, one-time monitoring. Same thing with the um, major environmental assessment, the environmental impact report. So substantial increase there, but it's it's something to, that recovers the time spent. Okay. Before you flip the page, uh, on the entertainment period, is that a initial or is there an annual fee? That'd be an initial. We do have annual fees, right, Steve? Uh, it's no, unless we condition it for such. Okay. So the bars that have they come in, that would be under their conditional use permit if they had to have it annually? Um, well, we can condition an entertainment permit for an annual inspection. It's a case-by-case -case analysis. But they all do not automatically get an annual inspection. Now, I'm just going back to a, a prior establishment where they had to come in and pick up an annual fee. Uh, they did, and then they changed it, and they didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah, the council well, changed that. We're talking the council about changed one. it. Yes. So is it, is it still an annual fee just under conditional use permit? So they would have to pay the annual fee of over $2,000 a year for this? Uh, automatically, no. Their entertainment permit, uh, depending on how it gets conditioned, it may have to. But the permit itself does not require annual renewal. Okay, do we have anything in this in a fee schedule that shows that? That would what what the fee would be? No. So we're back to the same situation. All right, thank you. Question on just curious, Steve, on entertainment permits. 
Are they transferable? No, they, they go with the establishment and the owner. So if it gets sold, the new owner has to apply for a new entertainment <coughs> permit. Thank you. Okay. Um, general plan amendment zone change, and so relatively minor increase there. The general plan maintenance fee we talked about. Uh, the technology fee, where this is a new fee we're creating to for money to be set aside for technology upgrades, um, annual maintenance of software for within the development services, so um, building planning, engineering. This would be a surcharge applied on top of that. Large family daycare, relatively large increase there. And I jump in on that? I was just at a conference for early childhood development centers. And there's, I can't remember if it's A, B, or I think it's S, yeah, it's S, B, 217. No, it's not. It's S, B, I don't remember. S, that's a different one. There were like, there's like a hundred of them. But there's a bill that's traveling through that says all home daycares, large or small, will no longer, all they'll need is a business permit, but we will have no authority over parking, size. We can all, we do no fees, nothing, because they're trying to help people, one, get jobs and to to do the crisis for early childhood development and so that's something that's coming down the pike um, I talked to Senator Roth about it who's one of the signers and hopefully we can derail that but basically they could just bring that business in and the problem is as it was as it was said to me this is the first of many businesses and trying to get people to allow home businesses because people need jobs They'll begin more and more to try to get these things funneled into cities and all, and if you, you can't stop them. And they have the right to sue you if you do try to stop them. That also includes additions, anything they need to keep that home occupation business going. And this is one of the first ones that they're talking about. Kind of scary. Of course, make your job easier, huh? Yeah, here's your permit. What the heck? <laughs> All right, uh, relocation permit, we're getting rid of this fee in the planning schedule because there's one that in the building schedule that we don't need two fees. Uh, model home complex review, this one's going up uh, a fair amount. We get into sign, sign review, um, wall sign, monument signs, um, these are going up substantially, cover the cost. Same thing with the sign program and same thing with the freeway oriented sign. So some substantial increases here uh, because the, the, t the, the time we had in there from before just wasn't covering what um, is, uh, they're doing today. Similar use finding with planning commission, substantial increase here. Site plan review, substantially, relatively substantial increase for the minor and then small increase on the major site plan. Um, modification to a site plan, this could be sub a substantial amount of time and the, the, the costs have gone up um, to reflect that. Accessory building use permit, so a, a fairly large increase here also. Special event permit. So private special events, oftentimes on private property, usually involving businesses, so we've kind of changed some of the the um, categories, but you notice we've also gotten rid of the nonprofit designation. And so, for instance, we have a seasonal sale grand opening, typically a business. Time spent to recover that, about $115. Um, a temporary constri construction trailer or storage container, um, again, typically business, $150. Parking lot sidewalk sale, again, more of a business, um, $75. Then add in a category for alcohol review. This is a um, review done by Sheriff's Department to cover the cost, their, their time spent on alcohol review. And th those could be, the, all, the other, these, all these other fees don't involve the event center. This one could involve the event center if it, there's a private event um, where they want to serve alcohol. And then we get to events in the public right of way. And this is just the permit planning piece of it. If someone wants to do a 5K or a parade or something that involves the public right of way, um, Eight hundred and um, sixty dollars. If someone wants to do a block party, neighborhood wants to do a block party that involves closing a, a city street, the time spent to review that is five hundred twenty-five dollars. 
And then for both of these events in the public right-of-way, there may be um, public work staff or other city staff on the day of the event setting up barricades or things of that nature, um, maybe a sheriff's department for traffic control. Those would be actual cost. Yeah. Um, so th that's a lot of, I, I believe a lot of that is kind of the practice today, um, but just want to make sure we get that in the fee schedule that that would be actual cost. This is probably for you, Steve. On these uh, fees on the entertainment and all that, is that pretty much uh, across the board in every city or are we higher or lower or we've been lower or what's the deal, do you know? Specifically for the entertainment and the sign permits, I have not looked at a comparison to other cities, but across the board, our fees are generally right where everybody else's are. Some of ours are higher. Uh, but generally, they're right where everybody else's are. Like, I know the alcohol review is the sheriff's department, but the right away and all that business block party, that's ours. So we're pretty much even with everybody else. Yeah, I, I've not looked specifically at other cities and what they charge for those types of permits, but um, I, I couldn't be specific on those. Thank you. Any questions about the recommendations and the changes to the special event permit? Okay. Um, temporary special event sign review. Uh, this is a, a relatively large increase, even though it's still a small dollar amount, $75. Is that like for, what is it for, Steve? Uh, there's two types. There's uh, for grand opening events and special sales and that sort of thing where they're advertising with banners, typically on the side of a building. Uh, it also covers the auxiliary sign permit that was added by the city council that allows those types of signs to remain for a period up to six months and then allows for an easy renewal of the of that sign provided it's still in in uh, look still looks good i don't know i guess because i don't like any increases on those mainly because people are trying to get a business going it's the business that feeds the city um, I know 75 doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're opening a business and you've just laid out all these other fees, it's kind of like maybe we could cut them a break on the sign to say, hey, come shop at my place so I can give one penny sales tax to the city of Norco. Just a thought. Something to think about, maybe. It's very expensive to start a business up. And maybe we could cut slack at one place, say, yeah, 30 bucks for a sign, six months, have at it, something like that. Yeah, for new businesses, you know. I think for any business, I mean, people, there's ups and downs of businesses and just, I don't know. It's just so expensive nowadays. Anyway, just something to think about. So, Steve, just to correct that $75 application covers a six months for that sign? Is that what you're saying? There, there's two types of sign. There, there's a, a what is truly a special event sign, and okay. you can have you can have your permitted 30 days a year, whether you put it all in one one time period or you break it up throughout the year. And then the second one is the auxiliary sign permit that allows the same type of sign, but it allows it to be up for six months. And then at the end of six months, it's a renewal. Um, and it's provided that the sign still is, looks good and it's not waving and flapping in the wind. And so what we're looking at here on this one, temporary special event sign, is the 30-day one? Both. They're both the same permit. That doesn't make any sense. You're going to spend thirty, spend seventy-five dollars for one, and we're going to allow a guy to send one for seventy-five dollars for six months. If you can have it for six months, lower the thirty-day and up to six months. So that's that's simple math. I don't mind the seventy-five for six months, but what about the business that said all of a sudden they have a new 
Norco hat they're selling. Ah, oh, Norco hat's here, and it's like a five-day sale. And, you know, at the end of five days, the sign is no longer, maybe we need to look at it that way. Because from a planning perspective, it takes the same amount of time to process. And so yeah, from, from your perspective, you're looking at it from a different standpoint, and so, yeah, that makes total sense, but yeah. the, the cost will be about the same. I mean, I'm fine with the, the six months, $75, that's fine. I'm just thinking of the person that has to throw a sign up, says special sale today. Are they going to have to go out and pay 75 Then next week they have another sale, different sign, different product. I know that uh, all of a sudden I can't think of the name of the, the, the store, but they actually, you know what, I'm not going to think of the name of the store, <laughs> <laughs> but they actually once a week have a different sale, it's a different sign, and technically that's a banner, and so they should be paying $75 every week, and so I think that maybe we need to just think about, I think you make a good point, Ted, I think there needs to be two. Now, now the one thing we do do, the one, the information that I didn't include is for the temporary sign permits that are just up for like a week or two. Um, they are allowed, if they know, for instance, we have businesses that have events periodically throughout the year. They know, they know they're going to have them. So they can apply for up to three of those events under one sign permit and not have to pay it each time. Well, that's kind of a big thing we forgot. <laughs> Yeah, I apologize. Okay. I, I'm good with it then, if that's Steve, the case. Like a, a business going out of business that puts up a sign in their parking lot. Now, are you going to go after them for a permit on the signs? Typically, we don't because we don't have enough staff to go around patrolling. If it gets turned in, then we go after them. I think that would be kind of cold-hearted, you know, to go after them if they're going out of business and every day they put up a little sign out there, 10% off of this and all of that. And I, I will tell you that my code enforcement staff are, are very, uh, they work with people and in that kind of a situation I don't think they would file a citation. So. Hope they wouldn't. Unless they come back next month and they have a different going out of business sale. <laughs> Yeah, but the one I'm thinking about, I think they're legitimate on going out because they're moving to the East Coast. All right. Uh, then we get into some of the larger development um, services again. So a specific plan, this one's going up substantially to cover those costs. And it's the same type of thing where a flat fee to cover um, the, uh, the, the typical amount of time, but actual cost if it goes over that typical amount of time. going to do to make it a little easier for you since the book is a little cumbersome is we're going to print this out separately for you and staple it so you can put it up front and then this the one that's on the screen separately so you can actually flip to the back of the book to the larger pages while you have the others in front of you so so it might help yeah personally I'm just going through appendix B as we go through your service I'm flipping the pages uh, sp specific plan amendment so again, amending an existing specific plan, substantial amount of time, deposit if it goes over that. Then we get into track maps, tentative track map, um, relatively large increase on, on this, and track map modification. Again, it's a relatively large increase. These are all, of course, larger um, development plans. Development phasing plan, uh, this one's actually going down. So. We, we always look at the time. That was the, when, when we're looking at the time, there's no dollars attached to it. So staff is not saying, oh, this, uh, I need to hit this dollar amount. We're looking at the time, and whatever that time comes out to be is what it comes out to be. So this is one where it came out lower. Get a, a, rel a smaller one to four lots, tentative parcel map. Again, the fee is a relatively minor increase. And if pars uh, parcel map modification to an existing parcel map, um, a little larger increase there. Um, a time extension. Uh, this one's going up relatively, uh, relatively small increase. Additional large animal units. One is um, going up substantially. So the new fee is going up to twelve hundred dollars. Uh, additional large animal units. I have a real problem with that increase. 
And the reason is, is if we lose large animals in the city of Norco, there will be no reason to keep or maintain a half acre parcel. And we already have taken a hit due to the waste management contract. Uh, feed prices are going through the roof. Um, go from $79 to $1,220. I, I won't, I, I, or to go, I just, I just think that's one heck of a lot of, uh, of an increase, and I'm not sure how do we, well, why are we justifying that that way? I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, you get rid of horses, we're gone. I'm, I'm willing to bet that $75 or $79 was, uh, it, it, it didn't cost $79 10 years ago. It was something that was subsidized by the council at the time. Right. We might guess. Absolutely. And um, so we're showing full cost. It, it's seven hours of time to process one of these that's new. Um, and uh, Steve, I believe this is something that's in a relatively particular part of town. Uh, no, it applies everywhere where animals are allowed. Yeah. And so it's we're saying it costs twelve hundred and twenty dollars. Um, obviously, it's well within your purview to say we are going to charge less. Yeah, I won't support this. I'll agree with Kevin on that because twelve hundred dollars is a lot of money. If you, you're going to put people out of business that's got boarding stables and stuff like that, uh, everything, and uh, you take a new family moving into town that's going to get horses and say they got room for five and they want six but other twelve hundred dollars is a little bit steep i think so i can't support that at all i mean you have many times you buy a horse for a kid they outgrow the horse you buy the new horse what do you do with it i mean the, the other old horse becomes a lawn ornament i mean we need to foster animal keeping so i i'm i'll, I'll concur with i mean we can move on but it's just something to really think about we lose horses in Norco, and we're done. And then the renewal fee, um, just so I'm clear on this, um, presently we charge $79 for an additional animal unit. Correct. And do we not do the same with small animal units? Yeah, we actually do the same for all, whether it's a whether, whether it's, it's a dog or a dog, horse. Horse, goat, yes. So it, this actually should be, the word large should come out. It's just additional animal units. But it, technically a dog is not an animal unit, but we charge the same. It would be if it was a um, anything more than four, right? Yes. And, and then, it, then it would be an animal unit, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, per definition in the code, an animal unit is something big or two goats. And dogs right. don't really get categorized under that kind of definition. I'm with Berwin and Kevin that that we should leave that, that cost in alone. Now, this is something that there's an animal control fee that's part of that. There's the two lines there. So for a new application, it's actually the 79 plus the 63. So today they're paying the $172. Um, and then the the renewal piece is just animal control so we have a currently it's 63 dollars for a renewal and we're showing full cost of 190. Um, and so there we would need obviously feedback from the council as to whether or not you want to continue subsidize the renewal or let the renewal go to full cost the 190. how many people are going to come in and tell frankie i'm going to add three goats and two pigs to my yard so i can have a barbecue next month how much do i owe you <laughs> How many people are going to do that? None. Frankie, you're sitting back there, and I'll pick on you. How many of these, <laughs> how many of these uh, renewals do you go out on? I, I, so, so we so we have 11 CUPs that we do, and I know we have more than uh, that many additional large animal units in town, probably that we've that we've approved. And he's saying he's going on at 11. So somewhere in a long line, it's not being adequately supervised anyway. So I think we're creating ourselves more trouble by trying to increase the fees on something we can't govern anyhow. I'm for leaving it as it is or reducing it myself just because of what Kevin and Greg and Berwin have said. You know, it's Kevin's correct. If we if we start messing with the large our ability to keep large animals here, we're in a whole lot of trouble. And I would imagine yeah. most of those are probably done by complaints. Somebody gets mad at their neighbor and says, they have six horses. Too many units, yeah. Typically and it's uh, horses. Uh, occasionally it's uh, for kennels because they have too many dogs. 
and then they can apply for a CUP to get additional units. Um, and but kennels come under a totally different. They, they do, but they're treated the same as for the fee. And then the other issue we have to, that we just, I don't think Andy's had time to put on the agenda we need to discuss, if, if a trainer comes on the property with somebody's horse or a kid comes on a trainer's property and then leaves or a dog or whatever, we, I think we need to look at, because the way that the statute is now is if that's happening, then the person, so let's say they have four dogs, but they bring, or four horses and they bring six on for two hours, three times a week. <coughs> you have to get a CUP for every animal that's coming on that property. And what that does is, I, I mean, one, it's almost impossible, but two, part of what we're trying to do is encourage animal keeping in the city of Norco. So I, I think as we look at this, we need to answer that question if we're going to decide, uh, I mean, like, I can think of a dozen trainers in town who bring horses on the property and technically, no, really, they're in violation. Yeah. And that's just kind of crazy. That means if you're doing hunter jumper and you bring your horse someplace, guess what? You're now in violation because you have too many animals and you have to go get a CUP and that CUP is very expensive. So, uh, for example, um, a half acre lot, you're allowed five animal units. Right. That could be two goats, two sheep, a horse is considered a unit. So if you have five horses on your property already, and a friend comes down and brings a six, technically you're in violation. Right. Because we have nothing in our ordinance that says um, visiting is okay for X amount of time. And it I just think we need, to, we, need to, we need to examine that. I think we need to look at that. Um, and the same thing applies for dogs. You're allowed four dogs per right. residence regardless of the size. Right. And when it's animal units, they go by based on the size of the property. Right. But for dogs, it's four, period, no matter how big or small your property is. Right. So anyway, Andy, you're going to be putting it. So we'll be looking at, so I think before we can answer this question, we kind of have to look at that and decide which way we're going to go, if we're going to continue that, or if we're going to talk, maybe put a statute in there about visiting animals. Uh, staff is looking at that. Yeah. As I understand it, the issue really is bringing on those four additional animals, does that constitute you doing a business that requires you to take out a CUP? The CUP is not for each additional animal that is brought on the property for the conduct of the, of the business. Well, again, I go back to animal-based businesses. We're trying to encourage, um, we're trying to encourage and foster animals in the city of Norco, because again, I go back to the argument. The only reason we exist is because people were willing to care for and take care of a half-acre parcel for a specific reason. They're not, you're not going to be able to build enough accessory buildings that people are going to want to keep up that half acre. There's not enough motor homes. It's animal keeping. And by fostering the trade, I mean, maybe we do a different category for CUP for that kind of a business. I'm, I'm not certain. I just think I would like to have that discussion before we really fully make that decision. That's all. Otherwise, we'll look like Eastvale. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I didn't mean. I didn't see you sitting there. <laughs> is the is the camera off? <laughs> All right. Um, fence and wall um, review related to subdivisions. Relatively minor increase there. And then I think I told. I think I said earlier this was the end of the planning services. Planning actually goes on for a few more services past this. Um, variance, a minor variance or a minor modification to a variance, um, relatively large increase here. Same thing with the, um, the major variance or major modification, this is actually a smaller increase. Planning information letter, someone wants information about their parcel and research needs to be done by planning staff, is a large increase here. And I believe this is, nope, one more. Zoning verification letter on the next page. A um, simpler, um, less detailed letter on a particular parcel. This one's actually just going up just a little bit. So that concludes the planning services. It's and we'll move into engineering or the encroachment permits. Work in the public right of way. So we have our single family utility lateral encroachment um, review. So a substantial increase. So we really looked at the time being spent, the typical number of trips being spent, 
um, by public works staff, engineering staff, to process these applications and and do the inspections and make sure that the work's done properly and that the city street or the city sidewalk is um, properly restored. So substantial, you'll see some substantial increases in these fees as we go through um, commercial utility lateral, um, driveway approach on the trail side versus on the non-trail side. Uh, driveway approach with pavers. Out pavers. A curb core. Large increases there. Then we get into the utility encroachments. So street cuts or potholes. So keeping this four and a half percent of the um, investment of the of the job, keeping that and and increasing the minimum from 257 to 540, but basically the, the fee is based on the value of the work being done by the utility. I don't have a problem with the increase in cro encroachment fees, but I know what, we're probably going to see more uh, bootleg type of situations, and I'm just hoping that, Steve, you have enough code enforcement and Chad to, your guys got to be, I mean, that's what I see. When these fees goes up, you're going to see more work on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday than we have in the past. So it's going to be a code enforcement issue that's going to take we'll all staff, not just the two code enforcement, all staff, to pay attention to. Okay. Then we have sign in the right-of-way, um, rel relatively minor, rel smaller increase on this than the other encroachments. Um, then we get into the public improvement plan check, and so these are um, typically larger encroachments, larger construction work that's being done um, in the right of way, usually related to a, uh, a development, but n not always. And so these fees are at the bottom end are going up a little bit higher than they are at the top end. At the, the very top end, the fees actually coming down a little bit and more reflecting the cost today. And then same types of projects that now on the inspection side. And real, so some larger increases both at the bottom end and at the top end for the inspection of those um, improvements. How did we get to the point where we lose thirty-one thousand dollars on inspection fees. It's been it works. It's been ten years since you've done it. I mean, would that be attributed to? Well, I mean, for our inspector, cost just cost of the employee. That's that's the large part of it, yeah. And over ten years, that you know, costs have gone up. I mean, it simply was just a flat fee that really never covered the amount of work that's actually required. I mean, that's really the function of the problem. And then, obviously, over ten years, the the scale of the cost for that employee has increased. So this would be more uh, in-house inspections as compared to like when we subcon subcontract out and have Will Dan or whoever is an outside inspector. Yes, uh, this this is only dollar for dollar on that with outside inspections. Well, again, for outside inspections, yes, it would because we would actually bill. If it was something beyond our scope that we can handle and it was a condition for, let's say, a developer, we would make it a condition that they must pay for outside inspection um, to do that. But again, for what we're doing here, it's the street side. So it's it's very rare that we couldn't handle that type of inspection um, because you're really just talking about sewer, water, uh, storm drain. Those are all things our in-house inspector could handle. It's just a question if it was so large and we had so much work, did we need outside then, yeah, we'd have to balance and recognize that the, the funds that we'd hire Will Dan for still have to come out of this fee. It's just not directly being benefited to that employee. But that's be very, very rare that would have to occur. I'll chat on that, and I don't know, maybe Andy knows. You mean in the 10 years, we have never done any cost of living adjustments to these fees? Yes, we have. No, I okay. Have. That's okay. That's just what I thought. Some of the discussions that was had uh, 10 years ago is 
the same thing we are having today. And in, in some instances, uh, decisions were made to not charge the full cost. Um, and, and that's where we are today. And the uh, council has to direct staff to charge full cost. Okay, okay. And probably 10 years from now, we won't be that much behind. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then Chad, he's got one more down there, and I, only because I have no idea what that. What's a WQMP hydrology? That's water quality management. Oh, okay. Report. All right. Simple. Okay. Wow. What a, what an increase. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and those guys, those guys soak us. <laughs> All right. So st staying last one in the public right of way, the oversized, um, overweight low. These fees are regulated by the state. You can't charge more than the Caltrans fee, um, which is sixteen dollars for a single trip and uh, ninety for an annual permit. So we're actually lowering the annual permit fee a little bit. All right, get into um, more development plan plan checks. And so we had the tentative uh, map checks earlier with planning. These are the final map checks. And so that the fees have gone up quite a bit. Um, and it's making it clear that these this gets you three plan checks. And then after that, it's, it's actual cost basis. And so the idea that most people get it done within three plan checks, but those problem people should pay more because they're not getting the work done. Um, WQMP hydrology review. This was going up substantially. Again, includes three reviews. Grading, grading plan review. So increases here, not huge increases, but moderate increases. Is that a? <laughs> no one ever describes increases that way. Um, going on. A gradient inspection. This is a more substantial increase, at least on the single family residential. Lot line adjustment, substantial increase. This is $119 is most likely something that was set at a lower subsidy level for whatever reason by the council before. Lot merger, getting rid of it, this being a deposit and just being a flat fee that includes three reviews. Uh, the personal animal keeping area creation and relocation. This one's going up substantially also. Uh, once again, I, I get the... I mean, PACA was created to foster animal keeping, and so what we're doing is we're jumping 299 to create the PACA to 1480. So I'm not sure if that's the wisest thing to move, if we're trying to get people to designated areas on their property that they don't build on, that they're animal keeping. Again, just a, a thought. I, I can't really support that. Is there something I don't know here, Steve? Yeah, this is, this is mostly applicable when somebody wants to move a recorded packet to somewhere else. Uh, if they don't have a PACA, it's either a condition of approval on their project for which they don't have to pay, uh, we, I don't, I don't think we've had anybody come in and ask for a recorded PACA when they don't have one, when there's no reason for it. So, so this this is a relocation fee. So we have a fee for something that nobody's ever asked to do. No, they they do ask to relocate it, and that's what this fee is. Probably the creation fee. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well. I don't know. If somebody's going to build a barn or something like that, and they got plenty of room. We're going to charge them fourteen hundred and eighty dollars to move their pack of fifteen feet to the left. That seems kind of exorbitant. But if it's part of the if it's part of the barn and it's already there, then that's part of the cost. Or is this on top of the cost? Well, it, it could be either way. Uh, it could be a condition of approval on the barn itself that they have to, we just approved one, where they have to relocate the PACA. They don't have to pay for that, okay. but they do have to relocate it. Steve, and, and I think Kevin, this line, Steve, does that cover the cost of that, if the county charges us on recorded fee? Is that what that also includes when they relocate since it's uh, recorded on their title? No, they, they, so they have, have to pay to, a separate fee on top of that. They they have to pay the recordation fee at the county. This, this is staff's time. Oh, okay, thanks. I thought it did. You know, on that, I know where you're coming from, but uh, we had a case of um, it was an accessory building, but 
it was a barn that where they had to relocate their pack and I think this fee actually for that situation is is fair and reasonable I mean it was an existing pack right, right that had to be relocated in order for them to build their accessory building fine that's all right sounds like you don't do it often enough to make it a big deal anyway a lot no. but probably get rid of creation yeah. right that, that's what threw me was the creation. All right, blasting permit. Blasting in the city. How about that? Larger increase there. I think blasting, you should pay more money. I'm not kidding. I think you should pay more money. Seriously, you're going to, because you know what? We do have to think of the neighbors, and if you're going to blast, I think that they need to pay more money because you're going to be you know, making noise and stuff for the neighbors. Remember they blasted up in the hills and um, and also, I mean, when they blast, Steve, as I, I don't think you were, you, I think Jim Daniels was, I'm not sure who was doing it, but when they blasted up in the hills along East Street, they started cracking walls and all kinds of stuff and we found out later they didn't didn't inspect correctly. They were using uh, too much dynamite and all kinds of, correct? Isn't that the story that was going around? And so then they finally brought in an outside company that said, oh, no, you can't use this much. you got to use this much. It was a, it was a big deal that we, they forced them to do midway through. So does that really 600 and, I mean, with all the other things you're charging to $665, if somebody decides they're going to blast in it, is this you that it would go to? Okay. Well, you're, or, you're, We're not inspecting the actual blasting because we don't have that expertise. This is simply to do the cursory to make sure that, to make sure the notifications were done in the community, the surrounding area, that if, they ha if they've had any, uh, they've done all those notifications, and we make sure that is done, and we make sure obviously to, that they're doing it in the right time frame. But it's really all we're making sure to do is so that, who makes sure if they're doing it right. Again, that's uh, I would assume a county um, uh, governance. We don't. Yeah, we don't, we don't get involved in the actual blasting portion. This is just to make sure they notify they're in compliance with that, that they've done any, that they've notified those residents, and then that they've made any accommodations they may have had. It's just making sure that they're they're communicating properly and nobody's surprised about what happened. Kevin, I think the lieutenant has, because I think HDT from the Sheriff's Department covers that, don't you? Yeah, the, uh, our, our Sheriff's Department bomb team does do the inspection. They do review the permits. So do they give you a, that the blast, does it cost, do you charge them for that? The, uh, yes, there is a county okay. cost that is. Okay, so it is more already. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right, then we have a few new fees related to cell sites. So utility pool or small cell site installation or replacement inspection. So $170 flat fee plus a, a $150 fee per pool or per site. We also have the new small cell site review, again a flat fee plus so much per site. And then a wireless communications modification review, again a flat fee plus so much per site. Okay, then we get into technical reports such as traffic, hydrology, drainage, air quality reports that may be needed as part of a, a, a project, um, actual cost uh, since it not, not really know what the time is going to be spent. It really depends on the report. And that is the conclusion of engineering. We'll move into public safety. Sure. Thank you. One question on that. So we're looking to cover 292,000 out of the 428. That was correct, and so some some of them were some of the differences due to subsidies. The was the the fifty thousand was right. part of that right. that we don't get much on. Right, that. and the, the larger um, uh, reason for the difference are those things that we calculated the cost, like that environmental assessment, major environmental right. assessment, where okay. you weren't really doing any. So that's where it has the the pound sign to the right. I put zero revenue um, to just. To, even though you, there's a subsidy calculation, trying to come up with a realistic um, personal revenue calculation is that's why there, there's that difference between the two columns. So it's basically all the numbers that correlate with the, the pound sign. Right. Is right. That, that and then and the few subsidies. Thank you. All right. Vehicle impound charge. So a lot of these costs are going to be um, um, sheriff related. 
So more um, sheriff deputy cost versus um, city staff cost. And so there are our vehicle impound charge going from 161 to 180. DUI emergency um, response cost recovery, that's staying the same, that you're charging actual cost with a $12,000 maximum um, that, that's set by the state. Uh, citation correction inspection, signing off a fix-it ticket. This one's actually going down. 28 down to 15. Um, background investigation. So this is more typically related to uh, a business. Um, if there are certain businesses operating in town, such as a pawn shop or secondhand dealer or fortune teller or whatever is basically required by the code or that the sheriff feels the need to, that a background check should be done, this is the, the cost to recover, recover that. And so there is actually a small amount of staff time and then some, some sheriff time. So this fee is going up. Uh, jail access booking service is fees set by the, the county, so we're not making a change here. The one-day ABC license, going from uh, no fee, no, not showing a fee currently, and so saying it should be $45 to cover that staff time. One-day ABC license, is that for special events for community groups? It is. Who do, who do we charge that to? So that'd be charged to the actual uh, participant that's applying for the one-day license. So if you have an organization or a group that currently has an ABC license that is requesting that one-day permit, it would be charged to them, the applicant. Pardon? Okay. All right, so I'm going to move into animal control. And so animal control is currently recovering about 20% of its cost. That's typically the range we see. Animal control is not something you're going to recover all your costs on because the larger part of that function is really the enforcement function, making sure that the animals in the community are safe for the community. And so there are a few fees that we are recommending increasing on as far as the licensing fees. So currently your unaltered license, your one-year unaltered license is $73. Um, we're recommending bumping that up to 85, you know, if, you're, if your animal is not fixed. Bumping that up to 85, going from 135 to 150 for a two-year license, and a 202 to 225 for a three-year license. Um, that's still much lower, well, not, it's still lower than what I typically see these days. I typically see these fees around $100. Um, so we're still, still a little bit less than that, um, but higher than what it currently is. Uh, the daily board fee for large livestock that have been impounded going from 14 to 20. The alteration fee, 52, 52 to 55, and for a cat, and 62 to 65 for a dog. Uh, the euthanasia fee is actually staying at the $102. And then for any miscellaneous inspections that are needed by an animal control officer, it's not covered as part of other fees. That's going from 63 to $140 to cover um, the cost of an animal control officer for an hour. All the other license fees we're recommending stay the same. The, the, the um, altered fees we're recommending stay the same. The adoption fees recommending stay the same. Uh, there are going to be some other animal control fees coming up after this one, but that's the, the bulk of them there. Ranch license. This one's actually going down. Vicious animal permit. This one's going up quite a bit to cover the cost. My guess is that 137 was a subsidized number in the past, but these are these are animals, people either bringing a vicious animals into the community or that they've acted as vicious animal. Yes. So the review to make sure that that vicious animal is, is um, properly um, secured. Both on that not one time basis, but also um, for annual reviews on top of that. Uh, vicious animal appeal, there's not a, a fee currently, but we're saying these, these appeals can take considerable amounts of cost, and it 
and setting this as a deposit, um, since we don't really know, is something that could, I've seen it take five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in costs in other communities. Um, so this could be substantial. Um, wild exotic animal permit, this fee is going up quite a bit also for the new. The renewal is staying relatively the same. Animal impound. So these fees are going up. The, there's the first, second, and third occurrence. The third occurrence in all these cases is represents full cost. The first and second occurrences are, are I believe, 50 and 75% cost. And so saying that first time, you're going to pay 50 if a cat, 75 for the second time, 100 for the third time. That 100 is the full cost. So that first and second time, you're losing money. Um, but part of this is we want to get the animals back to the to the owners and hopefully that they do a better job of securing them going forward. So that's the same kind of methodology for the dog, the small livestock, and the large livestock, that that third occurrence is 100% cost recovery. Ceased animal pickup. And this is where the, the animal is requesting someone to come out and pick up a deceased animal versus them just bringing it in to the, to the shelter. So those fees are going up somewhat, just a little bit. A live animal pickup, uh, these fees are going to be going up also. We've um, included the, the euthanasia fee as part of that cost because that's typically what happens with someone turning in a live animal and wanting it to be picked up. For Frankie, on this small animal pickup, deceased, now if that animal has a tag on it, do you make that, and it's laying out in the street, roadkill, do you make the uh, person that registered that dog pay that fee to pick it up? Uh, typically, the, the, the small animal pickup is when a resident requests us to come to their home and pick up their dog for euthanasia. Uh, if we find it dead in the road, we'll, we'll notify them uh, of picking it up so they can identify it, but normally we don't charge them just out of compassion of what happened to their dog. Okay, okay, I've wondered about that. Thank you. All right, then there's the animal euthanasia and disposal, and this is um, includes contract costs as well as as, um, as far as and staff costs also. I believe that's staying relatively the same, except for the the small livestock. Animal adoption. We're not recommending any change there. We want to encourage. Um, people come in and there's a certain price point where people won't and so we're not recommending any change there. That concludes animal control. Moving on to fire. Uh, weed and lot clearing. Um, you recently instituted this, this fee and we're not recommending any change to it. The actual cost plus the 100% admin fee. The lien release request. This fee is actually going down. Uh, it took a little less time but it's also it's a less expensive employee doing these now. Fire incident report is basically just the city copy fee. So no change there. All right, then fire prevention, plan check and inspection. So this includes everything else that fire does from an inspection and, and plan review standpoint. And, it, and the detail of all of these fees are included in the back of the report as Appendix C. And so this includes everything from sprinkler plan check and inspection, to um, um, business in, um, safety inspections, to fire code permits. And so we're making s some methodology changes on the sprinklers, whereas now it's a, if it's under 100 heads, it's one fee. If it's over 100 heads, it's another fee. So now we're saying, okay, here's a base fee, and then there's some, uh, a per head fee as it goes up. So instead of two big blocks, it'll be a, a one fee that just kind of steps up depending on the size of the project. Uh, same thing with the alarms. Um, when we get into the business inspections, you're gonna, those fees are actually going down somewhat. Uh, not a ton, but if you go, if you look back in Appendix C, there it is. On page five of Appendix C, page five of eight, there's towards the bottom, there's the annual inspection, small, medium, and large business. And the current fee for a small business is 79. It's going down to 72. For a medium business, it's 156, going down to 143. And for a large, it's going from 
um, 400 um, down to 358. So those pieces of it are going down. There are a number of fire code permits, depending on the, the, what you have going on at your business, for maybe for chemical storage or uh, if you're a dry cleaner or a lumber yard or store tires or a whole list of things, a lot of which are in the, in the um, city's current fee schedule. We've expanded that list a little bit and made some changes to it. So some of those fees are going up, some of those fees are going down. Um, but with the idea that that th this is to recover the cost of the, the plan check, pr fire prevention plan check, and the fire prevention inspection. A few questions on this. Uh, on, on your recovery target, your possible new revenue, you have $50,000, but you have your pound sign after that. So we're looking at a subsidy of $171,000 this time. That pound sign shouldn't be there. That's a mistake. Um, I okay. did. I did recommend a lower. I, I did put in lower um, possible new revenue, but that was just me being conservative. Um, I'd rather miss low on estimates of revenue than high. Um, so because you know, we're showing the $171,000 subsidy, but okay. 50,000 in new revenue. If if everything happened perfectly and you know there's there's all the fire code permits are in the system and everyone got billed, um, then and and there's the kind of the volume you have today that you could realize that 171,000. But I'd rather not predict that. It's something that might hap happen happen phase in. All right. So ignore the pound sign. In ignore this the case. pound sign. That's all that's right. a mistake. And and we're still looking for a hundred percent target. Correct. So now I have a question for. Chief, and since you brought Sandy, I'll have to come up with a question on that. Um, s since you're recommending changes uh, like zero to 100 heads and then increased cost 100 heads and over, is that not a change to occupancy when you increase heads from a different fire occupancy? Yeah. I knew you would know. I didn't think the chief would know. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Sandy. Um, it is not an increase in occupancy. I would say that it is in an increase in the size of the building or the okay. size of the occupancy, yes, because the larger building you have, the more sprinklers you need in there and the more time you spend doing the plan review and the more time you do the inspection. And are you proposing any change then when we have for occupancy? In, in cost increase? Like um, if you go from a, a 2B occupancy to something greater or density? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think that's applicable in the fee schedule. All right. Okay. Um, so my, my concern is this, that, um, that we do collect 100% that we were made whole on, on all of this. And once again, out, outside of the, it was 10 years ago, how, how did we get, what weren't we doing that so we end up with $170,000 loss over this time frame? What were we missing? Different fire department. No, well, partially, yeah. But I think I'm going to need help from probably Andy and Gina on that one to to give okay. the best the best response. It, I mean, if it's fire, this what I'm looking at is. I had this conversation with Steve. So, like a developer or a new de uh, development building, whatever, uh, like say with school fees. That applicant comes in, and we say, okay, go next door pay your school fees, bring me the receipt, we're done, okay? And we don't have any exposure. Could we not do the same thing with CAL FIRE? And the example I'll use is like Europa Valley, that with development, okay, that, hey, you go direct, you put a deposit with CAL FIRE, we don't want to touch it. When you pay all your CAL FIRE fees, bring us the receipt. 
would that so you're talking that about we deposit some based of our fees. exposure pardon um are you talking about deposit based fees like we do in other unincorporated mm. yeah. areas of yeah. the county development fees um taking the city out of the loop right yeah um that would require more staff i would Who's say part? because on what's that uh, on, on our part? part or your part um I believe on this the city's part because it would that's where the we collect the fees at the right now That's where we collect the fees is at the city building department. They take the plans in they collect the fees They issue the permit when the um, plans are approved So the way the county does it is that they take um, They do deposit based fees and then they bill for their time based against that deposit. so um, if they exhaust all of the money in the deposit, then they have to ask the client or the applicant for more money and they have to deposit more. If they do not use all of the money in the, the initial deposit and they've used, they've put less time into that project than anticipated, then they have to process a refund to the applicant. So it's, it's definitely a timekeeping issue and a, um, keeping track of money and often refund, refunds or asking for more. It, and the so city of Norco it, does it, that. It, it seems like you're asking, process. should, from a fire prevention perspective, the county treat the city as who are unincorporated, and everything that happens, you know, has to go through the no. through the county and no, okay, uh, not necessarily. And, and and believe me, I'm extremely happy with Cal Fire. I'm extremely happy with the work Sandy does, but is it cost efficient for us to take the plans and have Sandy? Review them here in-house compared to hey, you just take it to Cal Fire County Set up your deposit count and you guys plan check it there Councilmember Newton, I, I think I see where, where what you're getting at and uh, if I can try and explain sure And if not, we'll regroup. We'll, we'll make sure we answer the question. I think um, from an economic standpoint There's two items. There's economic standpoint and then efficiency model. So as we know here in Norco the city contracts for Sandy as a fire safety specialist mm -hmm. and then half of an inspector we split with Eastvale. Correct. Very efficient regional model. So when folks come to the counter here in Norco, the turnaround time, very efficient. Sandy's office is here in Norco and, and the same in Eastvale. Um, to send folks via, I mean, we, that we could enter into an agreement to essentially send all the fire marshal services to the Market Street uh, office. Uh, we, we could definitely do that, but I, I, I think um, it wouldn't be the most efficient model. Here, one-stop shopping, folks come to the counter, they ac access Sandy's, um, whether, whether it's plan check or inspection, they pay their fees, very efficient, they can move along with their project. To send them to Market Street is just going to delay them, and the question is efficiency and time. D does that, are we in the neighborhood answering your question? Well, yeah, you are. So, real question, the bottom line is, is some way of avoiding a deficit oh, correct and, and yeah I'm, I'm just yeah, looking to cover it so right. yeah. so I guess what I could say is that um, Sandy you don't split I know we do with fire ins inspection we split with East Vale correct mm -hmm. but no plan check plan check also yes so East East Vale yes they submit drawings to you here in Norco no um, for both cities, they submit the plans to each city. The right. city routes them to me for review, and then I return them to each city, and the city processes, collects the fees, issues the permit, et cetera. The, the funds aren't going to us as a county. They're going to the city of Norco, and they're going to the city of Eastville. They're being deposited in their accounts. And, and I do think there are some costs in here that are not going to be recoverable. So this is basically the cost of that fire prevention function. There's going to be costs that, you know, where you're doing education, are you doing more enforcement that are included in these costs, but you're not necessarily going to be charging fees for. So I think there is going to be, just by how things work out, you're probably not going to get recover 100% of the cost of the fire prevention function, but you'll recover 100% of the cost of the plan check, inspection, um, and, and 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 permits so let me ask you this then because I, I disagree with you that we should recover a hundred percent that and, and Sandy I'm not trying to be a jerk about it <laughs> the fees that you charge us on a say two identical projects okay that uh, we we I'm assuming we charge East Vale the same amount you, you charge Norco 
if it was two identical projects? Uh, it depends on the fees that East, Eastville has a separate fee Artists. schedule. Okay. The city of Norco has one fee schedule and they charge a certain amount and the city of Eastville has another. So they're right, not so equal. And they're set by each individual city. I got yeah. Okay. All right. See that. But then we're providing all the overhead. We're covering the overhead for you. Yes. 50%. So, right, so you're trying, you're, I just want to make sure it's Absolutely. equitable. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Not all of it. Question. I think your question is uh, more of why are we not recovering 100% of yeah, that, costs? That's the bottom line. Okay, I don't so think we should lose a dime okay, on so fire, yeah, fire yeah, prevention and plan check. Speaking about two different things, the ongoing fire inspection fees for building related, that's not uh, what we are talking about where we are losing the money. Uh, this is the annual fire inspection that the fire department goes out to each business and conducts uh, inspection on annual business. That's that, where we're losing money? Yes. Uh, so um, that cost, the way it is recovered, is currently we bill it through the business license billing process uh, as part of your renewal. And that's where you see the small, medium, large, okay? That automatically mm -hmm. goes in your business license renewal application. What is missing in the loop, uh, uh, in the process, is the permits that are required. Okay, so they go out and they inspect a particular business and they identify that these license uh, permits should be required. There is no current mechanism for collecting on those. Okay, so all these items that are listed here as permit, I think that's where the disconnect is. So we need to have a process by which Fire department goes out there, inspects uh, these uh, businesses, identify those that should have the applicable uh, permits. And then another bill will be sent to them or we work out a mechanism by which those can be recovered as part of the business license. That's where the disconnect is. And this annual business inspection, if I remember correctly, was implemented back in the middle 2000 um, with our old fire department. And uh, I, I, I don't know that this was thought out that way as, as a way of recovering the entire cost. The fire department would present what they wanted and they just yeah. went to junk like that. And I'm not sure they are actually doing all the inspection to every business yeah. as well. Just okay, well that... Uh, so that's what, what is going on here. That helps. So Andy, this will be something you'll be working with, with our chiefs? Yes. And I appreciate you showing up and, and answering that. I mean, uh, that, to me, though, that's an awful lot of inspections over the years to lose that, that amount of money. Should we charge 50% of the office space to Eastvale? Uh, I was thinking more like 80 <laughs> 20, Kevin. <laughs> Is there a way for all that money just to stay in Norco and then we release a little bit to Eastvale? <laughs> In case you guys don't know, we have an Eastville City Councilman sitting there. That's why we're ragging on him. Appreciate all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Andy. All right, so then after that is a tumbleweed burn permit. This one's going up from 20 to 25, uh, a little bit before that. There we go, tumbleweed burn permit going from 20 to 25. Um, and then a fire system malfunction on the next page, a fire, false, false fire alarm. Um, keeping this the same, not recommending any change to this. All right, that takes us into utilities. New water account, going from 28 to 42. Delinquent water turnoff, the turnoff charge going from 36 to 95. And then turning it back on, going from 36 to 60 during the day, and from 197 to 220 for after hours. So some large increases there. Broken damage lock repair, just recovering the cost of the lock. That stays the same as the 27. Uh, the pulled water meter and jumper. So people that really, really, really don't want to pay their water bill. Um, this is going from 88 to 145. Temporary water service meter for construction meters. This one's going from uh, for issuing the new one, one oh, and installing it, 103 to 175, and then if they want to move it, the 38 to, to the same 170. 
If someone requests a meter check or a reread, currently $15, full cost is $75. I have a question on that one because we have a lot of seniors that they kind of, they get mistakes made and how many seniors, Gina, do we have that ask for this kind of stuff? I mean, uh, Rose Eldridge probably got 50 of them. We have about, I would say, 177 individuals on the HUOP program, and I would say the majority are seniors. And so we would charge them $75 each time we reread their meter? This is where the, the customer is requesting it. I, I, I know that I'm not using that much water. You need to come out and reread it. They come out and reread it and know you're, you've got to leave How many, how many seniors, property. Greg, have called you about their water meter? Yeah. <laughs> and and definitely if it, if it was a mistake made by the city there yeah, there would be no charge for that but full cost is 75 wow look now you know, with your list of seniors on that program i mean that, you're not talking I, I don't think we should charge any of those on on your list that reread, but I don't know if they ask for a meter check or not. So I don't hear it that often, honestly. Um, and in, in our system, we do have the ability to see immediately that they're on the program. In in the last year, we only had five meter recheck reread requests. And the reason that occurs is because the staff takes the time to explain to the customer that they have an right. AMI meter that they actually can ping the meter and get an automatic read right there from their <coughs> cubicle um, and verify that the read was correct. Um, and we explained to them that for staff to go out, check your meter, only to find out it was correct, has a cost, and we want to recover that. So we try to encourage them to not waste the time or their money to do that. Um, but that is the cost to go out if we have to go check a meter for a read we basically already know from our desk is accurate. I, I believe you. I'm just concerned with seniors. To, to, that, I mean, the mayor did a great job of talking about the app. And I was in the back listening to some of the seniors going, what the rest of <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I think the list would be fine if maybe, because I totally get it cost that, but you know, already got some seniors that are eating cat food, and I don't really want to. $75 to some people is a lot of money. So I just want to be cognizant of that if somehow we can work with people that that is a lot of money for. That's all. But you're saying that you've only done five? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a lot. Because of the way we explain our system works, okay. we we are trying to engage the resident and help them trust the system. It's not a manual read where we could easily shift numbers, that it's computer generated. It doesn't make those mistakes. It's just generating exactly what's there. And we can with confidence explain to them that the reads we're getting are accurate. It's not a, it's not a switch read. And most of them say, OK, it's fine. I, I get it. I'm just, I just don't know how I use that much water. You know, we'll tell them we'll absolutely go out, but there's a right. cost to it. Um, but we, most of the time, we just talk to the resident and they understand it, and they decide not to, to go forward. I still think we should look at that as an individual. I mean, if you have the little old lady that just can't figure it out, I don't think we should charge her. Uh, but I don't know how you I separate Or she doesn't that. trust government. Yeah. <laughs> um, may I go back one page? Just uh, since we passed the total, this was on public safety services back on the uh, one-day ABC license. That Andy, I'd like us to have a discussion about that. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, public safety. It was the uh, item 6600, sure. one-day ABC license. Okay. If we could have a discussion, not today, <coughs> but later. Um, as the sheriff said, let's say it's the Lions Club that, or Robin, that, you know, pulls the one-day license. And, and those nonprofits, let's say Lions Club, they donate all that money back to the community. I think that we should look at not maybe not charging nonprofits for one-day ABC license. You know, pay the fee. Because most, most of the time that money comes back to the community. Thank you. All right, that takes us to fire flow test, uh, usually related to a new sprinkler system. This one's going from 362 to 425. Uh, new service meter, so a new meter on a, on a, on a new service. 
actual cost of the meter plus 20 percent be a new fee um, NSF check um, going from 25 to 47 per each check to cover not only the cost but what the city's bank charges the city for that NSF check okay uh, business license application processing so we're trying to simplify it a little bit um, if you're an in-town business today, if it's a change use, you pay 37. And this, again, separate from any taxes, this is a processing fee, um, regulatory fee. Um, if it's uh, changed use, you're paying $37. If it's no change of that property, um, that also requires CFO, it's $126. We're just saying if it's an in-town business, there's a planning review in addition to the to the um, the finance processing that that cost be that cost is $145 and we just have $145 fee for that in-town business to cover again the finance time as well as the planning time to do a zoning review to make sure that that business is in the appropriate zone if it's an out-of-town business it's just the finance time there's no zoning review so that's the $25 so that's going down actually from 31 down to 25 The home occupation business is in a separate service that we'll see in a moment. All the massage businesses, um, there is no, from a, a finance perspective, it's just like any other business. Um, under state law, if that business or, or technician has a license, state license, you can't treat them any differently than any other business. If they don't have a license, we're saying it should be covered under that sheriff background check. So they would, if they don't have a state license, they would have to go through that background check and pay that background check fee. So we don't need a separate massage um, technician or massage business license processing fee. They'd pay their business license fee if they have a state license. If they don't have a state license, they pay their business license fee and um, a background check fee. Allow those who do not have state, state license to operate. I don't know the answer to that as far as whether or not you, the city uh, has I the ability to do. say... Because that's isn't that part of our requirement? Yeah, that's part of the background review. So I would say no. We don't do the review. It's the sheriff's department. But I would say no if they don't have a state license and they can't. Yeah, that's get what our passed. code requires. They have to go through the process before we give them a loan to operate. And then the permanent swap meet fee is actually going down from forty to forty-four to forty, and the special event vendor fee is going up from five to fifteen. questions there um, and then we have our home occupation review and again this is the for um, home home operated businesses this fee is going from 37 to 55 yard sale permit we're not recommending any change there business license renewal would um, go up from 16 to 20 so processing each year after that first year Moved or changed license processing, going down actually from 31 to 25. Takes care of finance, and then moving on to city clerk. The agenda minute subscription service is really kind of a fee from another age when these things weren't available and, and um, um, in various places and online and such, and so the service is no longer provided where you're mailing the agenda to somebody. Uh, the public record copy fee, we're not recommending any changes there. 25 cents um, per page. Um, electronic file copy, if someone wants a copy of, of an electronic file on a disk or a thumb drive or whatever they come up with in the future, we're saying that's uh, uh, going from $1 per device to $2 per device, so covering that cost of, the de of that device plus a little bit of reproduction time, so that's, that's fees going up. If someone wants that file emailed to them, there's no charge for that. It's just if they want it on a physical disk or or device. Uh, the public notary fee, that's set by the state, so $15. Oop, I skipped over the document certification, which has no change. Public notary fee is no change, and it's set by the state anyways. Um, candidate filing, the $25 fee set by the state, no, no change there. And then um, initiative filing, that $200 per initiative is set by the state also. Uh, um, for film permit, Recommending that this fee go from $300 per day per permit. I'm sorry, $390 per permit to $500 per day. So this is a little bit different in that you're 
you're, it, there's processing time, but you're really selling the use of c city assets, use of the city, to be able to film in the city. And this is why the, the per day component. And so this is very common. This is typically how most film permits are charged. Um, we do want to be cognizant of, of making sure you're not pricing yourself out of your particular market because every, every um, city has different things that, that are of interest to filmmakers. Um, and so working with uh, economic development staff, we felt that that still kept um, the city within, within its market. And I think that, oh, the gateway sign. Um, there's various fees currently. They're set by the city council. I'm suggesting that, that these fees be set at rates that are determined by the market, that you allow staff to set different rates for different um, types of, of um, um, advertisements at different types of the year, different types of the day, or different types of businesses, and allow them to market that as a city asset um, and, and use that as something to not only raise revenue, but it's something to that you could still have different um, pieces of that from council direction that, you know, that um, in town businesses get so much of the time or nonprofits get so much of the time or that kind of thing, but letting the actual fees be set by staff and so that they can react quickly to changes in the market and be able to jump on, on things that hey, if a business comes in and they're willing to offer something for a longer term that's in the, the ordinance now, they have the ability to do those kinds of things. That. I've got one question on that, Andy. That was redevelopment funds. You used to put the sign up? <coughs> RDA? Uh, yes or no? So, originally, okay, and, and the reason I'm asking that is it, even though that was used for those funds, we, we wouldn't have any legal problems changing it. Okay, I just want to make sure. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Does council have any other questions? Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Just want to tell you, thanks. That's a good job. Uh, explains a lot there. Okay. On, uh, I do it. On things. Thank you very much, Gina and your staff. And thank you. All right. Yep. Yeah. Also, I'd yes. like to thank Gina. Uh, Thanks for uh, looking into this and answering my questions. Uh, thank you, uh, but I want to let everybody know staff overall spent quite amount of time, a bit of time, um, hours and hours and days and days um, working with Eric on this. So thanking everybody for their time. Thank you, Gina. So with that, uh, Cheryl, do we have any cards on this item? No cards on this item. Okay, thank you. So then it comes back to council. Uh, any other direction from the council other than what's been provided to Andy so far? I got one. Next time we do a five year instead of waiting 10 years. Okay. All right. Then, seeing no further business, I will adjourn the meeting.